It's another episode of the Good Advice Podcast. Thanks for tuning in today to another show that we have for you. And whether you're a first-time listener or a long-term listener, I want to welcome you and tell you thank you for tuning in today's episode rather than, uh, I guess there's you know, hundreds of thousands of other podcasts that you could be listening to. And hey, maybe you found this one by accident. Maybe you thought you clicked on that true crime podcast. And you're like, wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Who, who's this guy? How did I get here? But despite wherever you, your method for being here, I am excited for you to join today. Today's a little bit of a different episode. Typically when we run, we jump into the podcast. It's always a concept about business. Uh, the whole premise of the podcast is no fluff, just good advice. But before we dive, we jump in and dive into today's episode, here's a quick word from one of the amazing businesses that we'd like to talk about at the start of an episode. Check this out real quick and we'll be right back. Have you ever been in that situation where you're talking to a prospective customer and they say, hey, so what exactly is it that you do? Have you ever felt that sense of panic as you wonder, well, geez, what do I say? What do I do? Or maybe you say some things that you feel like in your head was very clear and concise, and then you realize you've been rambling for five, six, seven minutes. See, we've all had the pain of knowing that what we sell is amazing, and yet if people don't fully understand it, if they don't get it, they're not ever going to buy from you. More importantly, your impact will never be fully realized if you're not being taught totally and completely understood. That's why I trust Zach Messler to help me turn my message into something that can be perfectly understood. He's the best in the business for helping you communicate why your product is so amazing. And that's why I love recommending him on the podcast. You can find out more at ZachMessler.com. Be perfectly understood. So like I mentioned in the intro to the episode, I want to talk about something a little bit different today. What's typical on the podcast is we do a lot of conversations about like certain concepts and these concepts often are born out of conversations I'm having with people. Uh, For example, today I was talking to a customer this morning and we were talking about her hesitation around asking for the sale. This, by the way, is something that I myself have navigated. It is something that's challenging for business owners and entrepreneurs. And it's got me thinking about this episode that I'm probably going to create in the near future about there not being any pity purchases and sales. And really kind of where I ground this in is, this is such a bad habit, by the way. I'm about to tell you something that I want to talk about at some point that I'm not actually going to talk about today. But uh, something that I ran into early in my business was I just felt like if I, if I was generous enough and kind enough in business that people would, in sort of like a reciprocity way, they would buy from me. And what I learned, this isn't meant in a cynical way, what I've learned is that people are too busy, they have their own messes to, to take care of. And that emotion of reciprocity simply is not strong enough for someone to give me a pity purchase. Like, okay, you know what? I'm not sure about you, but you're obviously trying hard, so I'll hire you anyway. It's rare that this ever happens. So what's infinitely more valuable then is learning how to sell. How do you sell to someone in a way that you don't feel icky about? So I had this conversation with someone this morning. And thus, it's got me kind of motivated around this topic and a future episode and probably next Wednesday's episode is going to be on this topic. So if that kind of thing interests you, if it excites you, if you like that kind of content, then you can make sure to uh, keep a lookout for the podcast uh, for that episode. Again, we'll drop it sometime next week. So uh, separate from that, uh, something else that's been top of mind has been this question that I inevitably get time and time again, how do I start a podcast? And this comes up, honestly, in some ways I don't expect, like I was getting my teeth cleaned at the dentist and the person cleaning my teeth was like, Hey, you have a podcast, right? And I was like, yeah. Or, you know, how you awkwardly, I feel like the question always gets asked, like when their hands are in your mouth. And then there's like this weird dynamic of like, if I say something now, is that like keeping you from doing your job? You know, I I mean, you obviously get paid by the hour, I guess. And so it's like to your benefit that I don't take 10 years, um, which by the way, my dentist is great. They've never run. I mean, if, if nothing else, I think I spend too much time there because we have so many conversations, but 
Anyway, uh, the person cleaning my teeth was like, Hey, you have a podcast, right? And I said, yeah, I got a podcast. And she said, great. I've been thinking about this podcast and I want to know what you think about it, which I love to do, by the way, I love podcasting. I love meeting people who also podcast and it's fun to have a conversation about it. Well, transitioning from that, I've even had people pay me to help them start a podcast. Like, Hey, what would it cost for you to just like, give me all the steps to do this well? And that's been a fun gig. It's been fun to do that because I never envisioned myself this thing going on long enough to actually, um, you know, make any money on it, I guess. So all that to say, um, today's episode, I, I want, I'm talking to a very specific group of people who you have been thinking about podcasting, which if the answer is, that's not me, I, I'd say, hang on for one second, because it might be you and you may not realize it's you. Many people don't understand. And let me just say this. I'm obviously incredibly biased. Like you're listening to a dude who posts two or three episodes a week, 350 plus episodes. And here I am saying like, yeah, podcasting is great. Well, of course, of course I'm going to think that, right? But I will say that podcasting in general, it's pretty incredible. The numbers around podcasting you know, we're seeing almost a million new podcasts per year get created. We're seeing the engagement numbers are pretty insane in the sense of most content or most social media engagement. When someone like goes to a post that you have, it's like three seconds. Like you have just a sliver of time to catch their attention before they move on to something else. So this has led to some like really obnoxious habits, like pattern interruption habits, some things like where, you know, there's nothing, it has nothing to do with your business, but like you sort of jar the person scrolling, uh, which I personally think is kind of tacky. But uh, despite that, what's really interesting is podcasting is not included in those statistics. The percent engagement around podcasting geez, like five years ago, this was something like 70 to 80%. And it's only grown since then as podcasting has continued to become more mainstream. What I mean by that statistic is that someone is likely to listen to 70 to 80% of an episode, especially compared to the amount of engagement that they have with a random video that pops up on their feed or what have you. I think part of the reason is just like the mechanics of podcasting. It's so much easier to do two things at once. I can get I can get in my car and be driving. Uh, I mean, I do this. I'll be driving to a meeting and I'm listening to a podcast. So you could be working around the house, listening, whatever it is, you, you understand the concept. So whatever you're doing, podcasting has been, it has continued to grow to be this pretty prevalent thing. And more importantly, I think there are a number of business owners, not just hobbyists, but business owners who've begun to see the value in having a podcast. I was talking to a guy yesterday who he does, he runs a podcast or helps run this podcast studio agency. And he's been talking to business owners who are looking to start podcasts. So this today's episode is really geared around you the aspiring podcaster. Now you don't have to actually be a business owner for this, by the way, you could just be a hobbyist. Like I've talked to people who are hobbyist podcasters. They have a topic they're really passionate about. They want to turn it into their, into a podcast. And it's like, what the heck, what do I do? How do I do this? So what I want to do today is I want to kind of break down, uh, and I'm not going to be able to get into all of it today. I'll give you just a taste because on Tuesday, June 13th at 11 a.m. Central time, uh, I'm actually going to be hosting a one hour class, a free class where I'm going to talk about this much more in depth. It's going to be a lot of information, but if you've been thinking about podcasting, you're going to want to join that class. Um, it's called my grow your show events. I'm going to have a link in the episode description for you to check it out and sign up on a Calendly to go check that out. But separate from that, today, what I want to do is I want to talk about a couple of general concepts, not just for podcasting, but there are some concepts here that I think keep in brand with good advice. Meaning I said at the start of the show, I've always wanted people to have like the tactical, practical, tangible, meaty, like what do I actually do? 
And I think what's funny about this is sometimes content on social media or educational content or videos you watched are so interested in like aspirational feelings that they, they are detached from the very real, like, what do I do next reality? What I mean by this, think about a time you've been to like a week, a weekend conference or retreat or what have you. And you leave that conference on cloud nine being like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to change some things. But then you go back to your home or you go back to work and you're like, okay, so what do I actually do now? Like I, I'm emotionally bought in, but what do I actually do? So what I want to do today is I want to actually like walk through some very basic concepts. They're not going to blow your mind. However, these are key principles that if you abide by them, you'll be shocked about where you end up in terms of not just podcasting, but anything you do social media wise, content wise, heck, just business and life wise, it, it works everywhere. So we're going to talk through a few of those things today. We're going to get into it a little bit today. And then if you want more on this conversation, just sign up to my Grow Your Show event. Again, that'll be on Tuesday, June 13th at 11 a.m. Central Time. Uh, it'll be online. It'll be a webinar. Uh, you can join that. Check it out. Again, that'll be in the comments. So or in the comments in the episode description. So let's talk. When it comes to starting a podcast, I think one of the most challenging things people run into is what the heck do I talk about? <laughs> Cause I think sometimes when people want to start a podcast, it's less about the podcast itself and it's more about what it is that serves as like the basis of the thing they care about. Now I've seen some people go as far as to like, want to create a script for every episode. Like here's the script for today's episode. I'll be really honest. I shoot from the hip. I don't have a script. I don't even have a, I don't even have like a monitor with notes on it. This is definitely like free flowing thought conversation, which is why probably some of my episodes is like where it's like that Michael Scott quote. Like sometimes I start talking and I don't know where I'm going to end up. That has definitely happened before. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with having notes. I think if you're not able, if you're not able to like have a continuous stream of consciousness. You need something in front of you, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But despite the method for how you do it, I think people who struggle with this question of what would I talk about are people who don't really know what it is they're passionate about, which sounds a little unintuitive. It'd be like, well, I mean, I don't people know what they care about? And the answer is no. Some people don't. Some people don't have that level of self-understanding where, I mean, I remember having a conversation with a guy, we were talking about his business and I said, you know, what do you like about your business? And he was like, I don't really know. And I said, well, is it, does it, do you get to do the things that excite you? And he's like, I honestly don't know. And I said, well, what do you, what do you feel like you're good at? And he goes, I, and he wasn't, he wasn't messing with me. He was like, I really don't know. And I said, okay, um, gun to your head. You could do literally, you have, you have $10 million. Uh, that's probably why they have a gun to your head, but you have $10 million. You can do anything you want. Doesn't matter what it is. What would you go do? Like, what are you passionate about? And he said, I really have no idea, which this shocked me, but I've learned since then that there are people who just don't quite have the direction for what they want to do and what they care about. But to be a podcaster, you can't be that person. You have to know what it is you're passionate about, what it is you care about. And then like that then is the basis for then what you are going to make your prime content. Like for me, I know that the things that I ultimately care most about are doing good business as in doing business in an honest way, because I think there's a lot of fluff out there. And secondly, being a good boss. Like I think about your external customers, serving them well, I'm passionate about that. And your internal customers, the people who said yes to you internally, your employees, that's something that I deeply care about. 
And I know that in an instant, if you ask me to talk about what makes a good boss, if we just met in, met at a coffee shop and you just off the cuff asked, I, I, I would have to force myself to stop talking because I am so passionate about this. And I think this brings me to my second point. It has to be something you're passionate about because podcasting is a game of consistency. This is true, not just with podcasting, but anything that you want to be successful in. It is a game of consistency. You to make it long-term have to be willing to show up every day or in my case, three times a week. <laughs> so I saw someone post on LinkedIn and I don't remember the profile. I was just kind of scrolling, but someone said, you know, how have I grown my LinkedIn profile to, you know, 50,000 followers? Uh, and they had, they asked the question and then they had a checkbox and they said, I posted consistently on LinkedIn every day. And then the next, next statement was, or question was, um, how have I converted these followers into $10,000 a month checkbox by posting on LinkedIn every day? Uh, how have I built my brand into something that I can now leverage for yada, yada, yada. And they had a checkbox by posting on LinkedIn every day. <laughs> So, and I, 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 I wish I'd saved this post. I loved this post because this is the pathway to success. And I think it's why people get suckered so easily is because everyone is looking for the shortcut. Everyone's looking for the quick answer. And this is probably what I'm going to start my class on the 13th with, by the way, is, um, you know, how do you turn your podcast into like a, an actual brand that you can make money on? Uh, the answer is there is no singular episode you can post that will do that for you. My dad would always tell, and my dad, by the way, an amazing attorney out of Little Rock. Um, he's won endless amounts of accolades, just a good man, a good father and a great business person. We have talked long about how he built his brand and what he has consistently talked, and I think he's probably overly humble, but what he's consistently talked about is this newsletter he would send out every month to all of his customers, banks, what have you. And he points to that as the main answer for his business. So uh, we talked about this and I was like, yeah, well, it's like, what was in the newsletter? And he's like, it didn't really matter what was in the newsletter. The point was, it just let them know I hadn't died yet. <laughs> you know, I hadn't died yet. I was still in business. And I think there's magic in consistency. A lot of people, they, and this is also what trips people up. A lot of people think about content. Maybe this is what, if I was a smarter business person, maybe this is how I should have like framed this episode. This is, this is honestly about content in any form, but, um, what makes content compelling is less about it being the perfect post. If you chase the perfect post you will find yourself spending hours for a single post that will be there for a moment and then is gone by the next day. That is not sustainable. It's not sustainable long-term. You will burn yourself out. And what started as a source of passion for you will now be something that makes you bitter because you are literally wringing your soul out into this content that isn't creating the traction you want it to. It's not to say there aren't viral pieces of content, and it's not to say that sometimes people don't post things and they, they take off. However, these things are the exception, not the norm. Most people, I, I, I don't know why I'm having to say this. Most people become successful through grit, perseverance, and frank, frankly, showing up every day. The same thing is true about content. The, thing, the same thing is especially true about podcasting. My podcast is only where it is today because I continued to hit record and I continued to post. And I had a mentor early on, Randy Wilburn. He runs the um, I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. Amazing guy, amazing business person. And he, as we would talk about this in the early days, he would say, he would just say, keep pressing record. Just keep pressing record. And that is the truth. That is the answer. That is the secret sauce. Now, I think people don't like that as an answer because they have because they they make things too difficult. It's like, well, that can't be the answer. There has to be something else to it. And to their to their pain, there are slimy salespeople who are posting as much, who are saying things like, 
hey, do you want to start your podcast? Or let's let's blow this out a little bit. Do you want to start your social media page and have it make you $10,000 per week in less than 30 days? By the way, that's never going to happen. If someone tells you that they're trying to rob you, it's never going to happen. Or they're going to gaslight you. And when it doesn't work, they're going to say, uh, you just weren't committed enough. You just weren't bought in. I know all this because I've, I've lived this, by the way. I've lived this myself. I've experienced it. Uh, I've seen it firsthand. So all that to say, because the answer to success is consistency, this is why you have to be passionate about it. If you're not passionate about it, if your source of creativity isn't coming from this deep burning passion, I have to talk about this. Then when you get to day 186, when you're posting again and you don't know who's going to see it or who's going to like it, or who's going to care about it even, like if you don't have that passion, you will run out of steam and burn out. But for me, what's kept me posting is I, 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 I'm so freaking passionate about these conversations. I care so deeply about these things and I can't help but press record. I can't help but talk about it, even if it never makes me money. I think the last thing I want to share today, um, rather than getting into like the other minutia that comes with like podcasting is you do have to know your audience. You have to know who is ultimately going to be listening to this? Because if you don't understand this, like, like the, the passion part is key, but you have to frame that energy towards someone and knowing who that person is will frame your conversations. So like me, for example, I know that the primary listener to the podcast is an entrepreneur. It's a startup founder. It's a small business owner, or it's people who kind of live vicariously through the podcast. They're in a corporate gig, but they love the idea of entrepreneurship. They love kind of the free spirit that comes with it. You know, I think all these groups are important, but because I know this isn't like a corporate styled podcast, when I talk about leadership, I'm not talking about, Hey, when you're leading your team at, at, at Walmart headquarters, here's how you do this well, while also collaborating with all these other divisions. Like how I frame it by knowing my audience will then dictate how I then talk about it. And it will ultimately dictate the kind of listener that I'm attracting. I want business owners to listen to the podcast. So I'm not talking about some corporate gig. I'm talking about hiring your first employee. I'm talking about managing a team of 10, you know, that you've built this business up. And now how do I now manage this thing? I think when you don't do that well, you'll find that although you're passionate about your podcast, that at the end of the day, it's a bit aimless. It, is, it doesn't have the punchiness to it because it isn't resonating with the context of what your, what your listener is experiencing. Now, naturally, this is the problem that I run into with uh, almost every business owner, when we talk about niche and niching down, it's well, what about all these other people? Like, I love all these other people. And at the end of the day, if you are the answer to everyone, you are the answer to no one. Because why would I hire or rather hire? Why would I listen to a general, general styled podcast instead of going like, think of it this way. If I'm listening to a podcast on money, am I going to listen to the teenager's guide to wealth, <laughs> or am I going to listen to, um, you know, um, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs who make money. These are not like great titles, but you get it. Well, being an entrepreneur, I'm going to be attracted to the second one. Now the concepts are probably pretty similar in both. The issue is I'm immediately struggling to relate with the first one because it doesn't speak to my context. So that's why that's so important. Um, Excuse me, I had to cough. All this to say, um, we're going to talk more about this. I'm actually going to get even down into the nitty gritty of um, the kind of equipment you need to have, stuff you need to buy, what have you. All that's going to be on that at that class, the Grow Your Show class on Tuesday, June 13th. We'll talk more about it. Hey, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this, not just about podcasting, but like how do you stay committed to social social media content? How do you do this well? Um, 
you know, uh, and hey, actually, you know what? I'm just going to say, I hope you are successful enough where you don't have to be consistent in the sense of like, I hope that post is viral. I hope that podcast episode just takes off for you. Um, it'll be a lot less work in the short term, I guess. Um, but then again, you know, going back to my first point, if you're passionate about it, you're going to talk about it anyway. It's going to come up anyway. Hey, all that and more is going to be at that show. Thank you for listening today. We'll have another episode coming later in the week. I appreciate you. That's today's good advice. I'll catch you later. See ya.